<clears throat> according to what Amalek says, in Malachosh Mihidnagutzo. Don't have to worry. This is the way you should act. Be logical, be intellectual, don't be crazy. Shariya Torah he in Shalchman Seikal. What is the Torah? The Torah is intellect. Hagdamas Nasav and Nishma. If you say I'm gonna if you say I will understand and only what I understand will I do, this will not harm your doing of the commandments because you will do everything logically. Pretty good. Huh? That's pretty good. And you should know that that's what a lot of religious, ultra-religious Jews think. That's classically the idea of the Misnagid, the Litvish Jew. I don't even know if it exists anymore. But that was classically the idea that they only did what they understood. What they understood, they would do. Right? If you understood, I do. You do the commandments. You go. You get heaven. Go to Olam Abba. Right? You learn the Torah. <clears throat> you get a reward. You get everything has to have some logic to it and reason to it. So if and they then, understand the mitzvah, they wouldn't do the mitzvah. <clears throat> if it didn't make any sense, they wouldn't do it. For instance, uh, checking your tefillin. Uh, According to the Rambam, if there's tefillin, don't have any bad sign, you don't have to check them at all. So they would never check their tefillin. They would just never check the tefillin. And it was a bad... Until the Rebbe came along with the thing of tefillin and made everybody crazy about tefillin, checking their tefillin once every seven years, once every two years, once every year. Right? According to the letter of the law, you don't have to do it. But people started checking their tefillin and discovering that their tefillin were really puzzle. And they were putting on not kosher tefillin. And they were, but, but like a, a, a Torah mitzvah, is it like a, a, a meat with? Zachary, milk. do that afterwards, okay? Thank you. Meat with milk, okay? Right. They really don't understand that. They, they, they don't understand, but they they, they did it. <coughs> Usually, it used to be, and like I say, I don't know if this exists anymore, but they used to. Because they were experts, a lot of them at Torah, so they would find the most lenient opinion. And they could explain how to do things in the most lenient way. One example is, for instance, there's a commandment to love God. You have to love God. What does it mean to love God? It's supposed to be when you pray, you're supposed to think about God and love God. right? But they said, listen, it's better to learn the Torah, and who knows if you're really loving God anyway, and who knows what it is. So if you look in their books that they learn, they talk very, very little about what exactly is there about God you should love and what is loving God and getting emotional. The idea is that these things are not, it says in the Torah, it says it, you don't have to do, not everything it says in the Torah, you have to do. I mean, there's a commandment in the Torah to divorce your wife. There's a whole Gomorrah about divorce. It means you have to divorce your wife. You don't have to divorce your wife. You learn about it. The same thing, you learn about loving. You, got, you learn about, uh, an example, love your neighbor as yourself. So they were translated, love your neighbor if he's you, as yourself. If he's a Jew that's like you, then you should love him. But if he's not like you, he doesn't believe the same things you do, then you have no obligation to love him. Okay, it, it, it's, the, it's the easy way out. That, that's, a, that's a valid interpretation. It's a valid interpretation, but it's a very, very easy way out. Right? All I, only people I like are people that are just like, just like me. Right? They think like me, they have the same opinion as me, maybe they look like me. Maybe they... That, that was idea, that was a, originally the idea. The Ashkenazi, the German Jews, I'm talking about what typically, typically, there's, there's, of course there's hundreds of thousands of, of going out of the, of the, the, what do you say, the, the average, you know, the, 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 the picture, what it is. Right? But usually the Ashkenazic Jews, the, the German Jews, they weren't like that. The Yaki Jews, they weren't like that. The Yaki Jews, they did everything, you know, what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to do. You're supposed to love God, so they had thoughts. They would think, you know, about God creating the world and everything. There was Simpson, Royal, Floral, Hirsch. They had their great rabbis that also brought them to a certain type of love of God. But it wasn't crazy. That's the thing. It wasn't crazy. It wasn't excitement. Excitement was out, right? Being excited. You were excited maybe in my, at, at the Purim a little bit. Uh, Comes a mitzvah. So Amalek, in other words, is saying, I'm doing everything for your benefit. Don't go crazy about the Torah and the commandments. 
Don't be irrational. Understand first and then do. The Torah is there for your benefit. That's why it's there. The commandments are there to help you, to make you better, help you and protect you. That's where the Torah is there. Do what you understand. The more you understand, the more you'll do. That's what a Amalek says. There's a mitzvah to wipe out a Amalek. Ba mitzvah to Amalek umechayato umaziro. And it wipes him out and it warns. Han hagot shel asher korcha. If a person acts in this cold way, cold and calculated way, that Amalek wants, karirut, coldness, mevi chalil, it brings the kium, a pirush, a cher, another word, karcha means carry. What does it mean carry? It means everything is like accidental. It's, it's by the way. Hachayim v'akoko shenitna minashamayim. Your life and the abilities that were given to you from God, the shame in order, kiyum, matarot, nalot, in order to fulfill your obligation of kibusha oritz, of conquering the world and transforming the world to a dwelling place of God, to put meaning in the world, to put happiness in the world, to put love in the world, <clears throat> to put order in the world, that all of these things near to me will be instead used the sherut to serve the powers of egotism, tuma, and klippa, Rahman Islam. Everything that you do, you'll start off with it. You'll, people can use the whole Torah to go against the Torah, to go against God. There were big there were popes that knew all the Gomorrahs. They knew all the Gomorrah with Rashi, with Tosfas, they knew of the whole thing. And they used it all to find out certain sentences where they were. <laughs> To show that Judaism is old fashioned, you can take it over, you can redo it, you can remodel it. And if you bring a sentence to show that they're wrong, they know that sentence already. They have a sentence, the explanation for that also. Why? Because the whole thing is, take it, the Torah, easy. Zui totza ativit. This is what happens from coldness. Mishu mit yamer liot yodei Like Esav, he claims to be a hunter. Hofech in the end, he means Isade, he ends up to be a field man. Boreach me'olei Torah, he runs out from the Torah and Torah Shebechtav and Torah Shebalpeh. Chova lit naheg, our obligation, think, just think of it. If the Jews would have gone logically, they would have never left Egypt. They would have never gone get the Torah. Why should they leave Egypt? God just... God destroyed all of Egypt. He destroyed all the Egyptians. Destroyed them. Especially after he drowned the army, the Amsuf. The Jews should have said, okay, let's go back to Egypt. Well, now we're, then nobody's against us. You know what? Let's go back to Egypt and make them into slaves. And then we'll show them. That's logical. God says, no, no, no. Leave Egypt. Go into the desert. What the heck? Why? No <laughs> what do we have to go into the desert for? What? I don't understand. What's the point? We're so close to Egypt. We work so hard. At least let us get some pleasure out of it. Right? Let's get revenge. Right? Why should they beat us up? We're going to beat them up. God says, no, don't think about it. Just go straight. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to go to the land of Israel. Right? And finally, when they got to the land of Israel, they said, okay, here we are. We're the land of Israel. For, we've been wandering around. <clears throat> what do we do now? They've wandered around, not, you know, not for a long time, a year or something like that. Let's go into Israel. Let's go. <clears throat> and he said, well, which is one thing, and God, what's going to be there in Israel when we go in? What's going to be? Oh, that's going to be wonderful. Uh, the land of milk and honey. and that. Milk and honey, is that? Ah, milk. Who needs milk? You know, I'm allergic to milk. What about honey? <laughs> Hey, honey, I understand that I've got diabetes, you know. I can't. God says, you don't have any diabetes. Don't worry about it. There's going to be mountain Torah. Yeah, yeah, we gave the Torah. Nobody has any sicknesses. Nobody has sicknesses. Maybe you don't have sickness, but we do have... Uh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, what's it called? A uh, uh, person talks himself into being sick. I forgot what it is. Hypochondriac. You can be a hypochondriac. You have free will. You can make yourself into sick if you want to. Right? And when we go in there, what do we? Who's going to fight our battles? Oh, God says, um, you know, you'll fight the battles. Whoa, hear that? 
<laughs> hear that? You hear what he said? Shlomo, what, what, what did he say? I'm sorry, I was, I was busy thinking about the, the, my, 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 my sugar count. What, what's this thing about... We're going to have to fight battles. Fight ba- What do you mean? What does that mean, fighting battles? I'm going to have what, trouble for my wife? I mean, we're getting along. No, no. There's enemies there. There's big giants, and they have swords and knives, and we're going to fight against them. You know how to you know how to do that, Chaim. A knife. The guy's got a knife. <laughs> Listen, uh, Moshe. This is Nish from here. Nish from here. I'm sorry. Send the showim rim. <laughs> Send the showim rim. I'm not. It's not from me. You know, I got this. There's some big guys. You know, there a few Satmar guys. Send them in there and see what they say. Which is says, okay, I'll send 12 guys and they'll come back and they'll tell you how it is. They went and they said, it's wonderful. The place is just one. Look at these fruits. And the people that we see are people that eat these fruits. You know how big these fruits, they just pop them up like that and they eat them. Every grape is like this. Everybody says, whoa, to go for a few fru- fruits, to risk our life for a couple of fruits for our grape. <laughs> Who needs it? Who needs it? We'll stay in the desert. We get this man from heaven. And somebody says, you know where the man comes from? Of course we do. Everyone says in unison, it comes from the Lord. Zanu Farnes to call, everybody falls on their knees, and they say, we're going to go into Israel where there won't be anything from the heaven? No, we're going to stay here and eat the food of the Lord? Yes, we're going to eat, learn the Torah of the Lord? Yes, we're going to do it. Why? Because it's good for me. As soon as you start doing things logically, then you end up not doing anything at all. That's the point. That's what a Amalek does to... Huh? If you start to... <clears throat> That's what Amalek wants to do for us now. Think logically. Be logical. Don't you, you do a couple commandments. You don't have to do all the commandments. You know how many Jews there are that don't do anything? You put on tefillin, it's good. You're doing more, better than... You. God should be happy you're doing anything. Right? You got to put scissors on. Eh, come on, take it easy. What do they really do for you? What is this keeping Shabbos? What does it do for you? I mean, cut seriously. Ah, what does it do? Right? Turn on the light. Ooh, step on a crack, you break your mother's back. Right? We used to, when we were kids, they used to, right? Ooh, don't turn on the light. It's Shabbos. It's not Shabbos. It's your own, it's, it's Sunday. Oh, yeah, it's Sunday. It's okay. I don't understand. If it's Shabbos, you can't. No, I don't do it. It's Shabbos. I just looked at that Shabbos. That doesn't make any sense. If you start to go after your sins, then you're never going to do what God wants. And even more, if God went according to his sense, he would never have even created us. What's he creating us for? What's he make everybody with all these a digestive system and a circulatory system? That doesn't make any sense. Why everybody has to have a, a, a reproductive system? What do you have to have it for? Right? Just make people and make more people. It's such a big deal. God made one man. You can make 20 men. You can make 1,000 men. You have to have reproductive systems and you have to have digestive systems. What do you have to have all these things for? That's more interesting. Right? So the answer to that is, is that there's things that we cannot understand. And one of those things is the essence of the Torah. You can't understand it. But there is a commandment to try to understand as much as possible. <clears throat> Somebody once told me, he said, Ah, you religious people, you don't have any questions. Eh, everything by you is okay. So all of a sudden I got this thing, I said, that's exactly the opposite. We religious people, we have more questions than you do, but our Connection to God doesn't depend on the answers. Huh? It doesn't depend on the answers. I don't get an answer. I don't get an answer. Okay. Right? Things don't make sense. Don't make sense. Holocaust makes sense. Doesn't make sense. It's against sense. Against sense. Right? The Rebbe, for instance, was very, very opposed to those people who explain the Holocaust was because of the non-religious people. The Holocaust was because of, because of us. The Holocaust was because the Germans were evil people. Don't try to take it away from them, right? Because the Jews were like this, and because the Zionists, because this. The Jews, the Germans were evil, just murderers, and they deserve every punishment that they can get, right? The, 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 the punishment. And that there's, why did God allow them to do a thing like that? I don't know. We can't understand it. True, it says in the Torah that if the Jews don't do what God says, God is going to punish them. But, you know, a father threatens his son. So you do that, I'll kill you. It means that he, he says, officer, I told him I was going to kill him. I, I told him that if he messed up, his, he didn't eat all his food. I told him I was going to kill him. So, right, I'm, I'm innocent. 
judge, uh, right? I told my wife, if she burns the food one time, I said, I'm going to kill you all. That, that gives him permission to do it. Of course not. If he loved, God loves the Jews. He would never do a thing like that. A father doesn't trade that to his children, no matter what he does. Explain it? Can't explain it. So what, you're going to come to a logical explanation? You can't. So why did we get the Torah? Because God wants. Why do we do the commandments? Because God wants. That's the thing right now, is we have to realize that when we do the commandments, we have to be excited because we're doing what the, our Creator that's creating us right now, what He wants. That we should be excited. But Amalek comes along and says, it's a nice idea to be excited, but not for you. You're a normal person. Maybe for children, for, you know, for crazy people, breast love. They can be crazy, but not for you. Right? Not for you. There's some Chabad. Take it easy. Says the Rebbe, that is bad advice. That is bad advice. Everybody has to be excited. In a different way. The breast of they're excited in their way. Chabad is excited in their way. The Litvish are excited in their way. The Yekis are excited in their way. But you've got to be excited about the Torah. The Torah is above understanding and it is infinitely good, greater than any possible way we can understand. And even though sometimes we don't benefit from it physically, right? We don't see the benefits from it. And sometimes it's exactly the opposite. Like in the time of Purim, because the Jews acted Jewish, they were under the threat of death. Right? If they would just say we're not Jewish, there wouldn't have been any threat. But nevertheless, Jews did it. Right? That's the essence of what a Jew is. We must act in the way of Yaakov, a, the simple, wholesome person. This is Yeshara. This is the straight way. Like it says, Tomat Yeshorim Tamchen. The simplicity of the simple, straight people, the honest people, that will support them. Kefi shenidrash begamor, like it says in the Gemara, va'al achoshvim lagdim et anishma. Those people that say we should understand first, and then we should do, and they are up, they oppose getting excited. We say salaf bogdim tashdim. It says the falseness of the how do you say the perfidious people, the unfaithful whatever people tashdim will destroy, will be their destruction. Okay, so that is the first war against the Amalek. It tried to stop the Jews from getting the Torah. What does it mean? Don't be excited about the Torah. If God wants to give you the Torah, He'll come to you. Don't be so excited. And for sure, don't agree to say you're going to do all the commandments before you see what they are. Don't say, Nasa, we will do whatever you say, and Nishma. You ever heard that idea, Nasa and Nishma? The Jews before the Torah, they said, Nasa, we will do whatever you say, Nasa. We will do whatever you say, God, the nishma, and then we'll understand it. That's what the Jews said. Whatever you tell us to do, we'll do it. And afterwards, we'll understand. And if we don't understand, we'll still do it. Right? Now that, says the Rebbe, is not a very wise way to do things. Says the Rebbe, exactly the opposite. That is true Judaism. Of course, you have to try to understand afterwards. You have to use your mind to understand. You shouldn't just say, I'm just going to do it cold. No. With the understanding comes even more love, more excitement, more connection, more intimacy with the Creator. But the main thing is to do. That's the main thing. Do. Don't say, I'll understand first. I'll learn the books of Kabbalah. I'll understand because you'll never end up doing it. You'll never do it. I remember once I was putting the fill-in on people in the marketplace where I go put it on, the, on, the, on Friday. And some fellow came up to me and he looked, he looked like a criminal. He looked like one of these Israeli street criminals. You know, not like a, a polished, you know, mafia criminal. A street criminal, he had sort of like a, a stubble beard. He was a muscular guy. He had a couple of tattoos on. He had this mean sort of a look on his face. He was a short guy. And I said, come put on tefillin. He said, oh, okay. Put on, I said, okay. A Sephardic guy, probably. Put on tefillin. So I said, which hand do you put on tefillin on? So he said... Uh, I put on this hand. I said, well, which hand do you write with? He said, oh, I'm a left hand. I write. So I said, well, you have to put your tefillin on the right arm. He said, no, no, no. No, no, no. You put the tefillin on the left arm. Because the left arm is gvura. And you have to sweeten the gvura with the four aspects of intelligence that are found in the tefillin. I said, where did you learn to do it? He said, well, you're right. It's true. What you say is true. 
But nevertheless, you have to put the tefillin on the opposite arm that you're right with. So no, 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 no. You have to put the tefillin always on the left arm. The left arm is severity. All bad things, negative things come from the left. We're fixing it up by putting on the tefillin, which the tefillin are the arbi mochin of Abba be'ima. I said, yes, he said. So I said, so I said to him, listen. I'm, I said, listen. I, I know what you're talking about. I understand what you're saying, but you have to believe me. I'm not standing here in the street to make people do sins. I'm telling you that despite all of your logic and all of your intellect and all of this and, this and explanations, to fill in have to be put on the arm that you don't write with. That's the way it goes. I said you have to trust me. You have to trust me. I'm putting on. If it wasn't why for not? me, you wouldn't, wouldn't put it. What? No, why not? Why not what? Ma. Can I put pin on my right hand? Hashem said. Hashem said. It says. 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 Yod with a hey means the weak arm, which a weak arm. It says in Parshas Bo. In Parshas Bo. But if I'm writing with two ends, there's, there's a very big question on that. You have to look. There's books written on it. There are some people that they put on to fill in on this arm, and then they put it on this arm, which means they have to remove the strap because it's a different knot. But I know a couple of people that did that. They used to put on tefillin on both arms. They put first here and then here. But they would make the blessing on the right because most people write with the right arm. So the blessing they would make on the left, but then they would also put on, on, the, on the right arm. Would you write with both arms? Then there's also other questions. What if there's people who they write with their right arm, but their strong arm is their left arm. Everything else they do with the left arm. They throw and they catch and they move and they... they Right, with their left arm. It says, use, that's also a problem, but not as big as a problem. It goes after the arm you, you write with, usually. Even though it says in the Torah, that with, with a hey, the weak arm. So weak arm seems to imply the arm that's the weakest, right? Arm that's the weakest, that should you put on. So according to, okay. <clears throat> those are questions that are written about in books. You have to, the person that has, has that very interesting uh, problem, and should go to a rabbi. But it's a good problem. If we, that should be the problems of the Jewish people. It should be problems like that. A healthy problem like this. Yeah, gazunta daiga. A healthy, healthy problem. That's the first war of Amalek. The first war of Amalek is as soon as the Jews left Egypt to get the Torah, Amalek stood in their way to call them off. The second war. The second war, the second time that Amalek struck was when the Jews were about to enter Israel. It was in the end of the first period of their wandering in the desert before they went into the land of Israel. Amalek took a trick of disguise with, uh, how do you say, with deceit. Amalek. What did Amalek do? Who he disguised himself as a Kanaani, a person, one of the dwellers of the land. Kadesh of Bnei Israel and the Jewish people would not recognize at Oivam their enemy, Mipnei Arboim Shana. This, this was the enemy that attacked them 40 years earlier in the desert. How long did the Jewish people wander in the desert, Zechariah? 40 years. 40 years. In the beginning, just when they got out, Amalek attacked them. And at the end, also just before they went into the land of Israel, again they were attacked by Malak. Um, but doesn't this connect to the book of Yahushua? Because in the book of Yahushua... You, you said that before. You said that before. Go, let's go. A Malak was left. The one who, who defeated a Malak was left over. David, uh, Yeshua and those, they didn't defeat a Malak. That was left over for David. And <clears throat> David also... Uh, David, David fought, and in the end, he also didn't defeat him. Amalek is still alive now. But Yahushua fought them. But he didn't defeat him. Because they were still left. They were still left. We have to look at Yahushua and see what it is. But nevertheless, uh, the, the war was left for Shaul, King Saul. And he almost defeated him, but he left them alive. And that was Agag. So in the time of David, maybe there was no nation of Amalek, but there were still Amalekites around. That's what Agag was in the time of Purim. How long after Pur? How long was Purim after King David? A long time. Long time. About four hundred years. Four hundred. Right. Four hundred eighty years. Ninety years. Something like that. Almost five hundred years. So there were still Amalekites back then. It says uh, I'm an Agagi. He came from Agag. Okay. 
Second war. The second war was at the end of the first time when the Jews were coming in to, wait, to Israel. So Amalek now disguised himself. Now he appears not as the son of Abraham and Isaac. No, he appears as a non-Jew. He concealed his origin his origin from being uh, the seed of Abraham and Yitzchak. Now I'm Malik, and now we're talking about, you'll see, it's talking about now in the time right before Mashiach. A Malik also attacks us, but not about Torah and Mitzvah. Now, in our time, a Malik strikes with a different thing. He says, do Torah, do Mitzvahs, but who doresh achat only one thing a people in yene gashmiel he said you learn torah do mitzvahs be excited about torah be excited about mitzvahs but the physical world leave to me when you're not learning torah when you're not doing the commandments what are you doing driving your car home you have a house <clears throat> you you have children the education of the children how the house is run how you make money Anything that's connected to Eretz Canaan, you have to learn. Nowadays, a Moloch doesn't come and say, don't do Torah, don't accept the Torah. He says, do the Torah, that's a Jewish thing. Do the mitzvahs. But when you're not doing Torah and you're not doing mitzvahs, then I'm the boss. Then I'm the boss. You have to be normal. You have to be normal. Like they were said, Yehudi b'beitecha v'adam b'tzeitecha. You'll be a, a Jew in your, when you're at home, when you're in shul. But when you go out on the streets, you're a normal person. You have to look normal, act normal. Kach u'to'en kavi am Yisrael. That's what he says about the Jews. Sayam ta'kavara t'kufa ta'hishtalmud b'midbar. You finished your 40 years in the Are desert. Are trying to connect this to the Yatsahara? Yes. Torah. But he says, when to be connected with the Eight Torah? Not when you're learning Torah. And the first time Amalek hit was, don't accept the Torah. Now, a day is Amalek says, do the Torah, do mitzvahs. I'll let you do whatever. You be excited about Torah and mitzvahs. But when you're not doing Torah and mitzvahs, when you're dealing with things in the world, <clears throat> money, house, friends, enjoyment, sleep, eating, things that aren't dealing with the Torah, then be like everybody else. Be like everyone else. Be normal. Look normal. Act normal. Be like a, you don't have to take a break every day. Daven Mincha, Mariv, you do chitas, things like that. Eh. Then you, man, you, do, you do what you have to do, Torah mitzvahs. But when you're not doing those Torah mitzvahs in the middle of time, then I want to be the boss. Ata yesh lecha lahachshir et atzmacha b'chenisa leres Israel. When you were in the desert, you were learning Torah, you had to be holy. But now, says Amalek, right before you go into the land of Israel, you're going into the physical, real world. You're going to do the 39 work, the 39 malachas that are things that are forbidden on Shabbos, that you, that you should do the rest of the week. You bake, you write, you cook, you make a living. Alecha now, lil modet seder eretz kanan. You have to know what to do in the land of Canaan. What is necessary to be mushlam shel malach as a whole? You're going to have to make money. You got to you got to live in the real world, man. You good learning Torah and mitzvahs is wonderful. But what about day-to-day life? You have to put on clothes. You have to walk in the streets. You have to drive a car. You're going to talk to people. Don't Look too Jewish. Don't act too Jewish. Don't think too Jewish. The shame be too Muslim. Im lo titnaheg. If you don't act like everybody else around you acts, el lo tu chal ele sidrom ele lo tu chal enot. You will not be able to get pleasure to appreciate the world. Sheinach zakukalem that you need them for Torah and mitzvahs. Money. How are you going to make money? You won't be able to live. You're going to want to keep Shabbos, right? You want to do Yom Tov. You want to teach your children. So therefore, you have to act like everybody else. 
Act in the normal way like everybody else acts. Don't be too religious all the time. The Midrash says, It says over there that Amalek attacked the Jews and they took a prisoner. It says, what is the prison? It doesn't say they took prisoners. So they took a prisoner. Who was the prisoner they took? Omer Shakanani Melech Arad Lakach Beshevi Mibene Israel Rak Shifra Kanani Tachat. He took only one maidservant, and it wasn't even a Jewish maidservant. It was a non Jewish maidservant. It was a non Jewish maidservant. Just one second. Let me answer my son. Oh, it's time to stop anyway. One second. Hello? 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 Hello?